All right. So I love the Mythbusters, right? Um, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm here with my people because you all clearly love Mythbusters too. But it, for me, it's absolutely because I'm an information addict and I like to learn new things. Um, and they, they address things, but not just pull up like random bits of knowledge, but then like test, figure out, and actually decide whether it was, you know, fact or fiction, you know, truth or myth. And I think that we can apply the same kind of system to learning a little bit about securing our WordPress sites, or even better yet, just sort of being secure on the internet, kind of securing ourselves. Um, and so that's kind of how I want to go through it. I want to look at, at a lot of these things that we hear about security and address whether they're actually helpful or whether they're not, whether they're fact or fiction. Um, and, and I'm going to start with security is scary, right? It's, it's this big thing that we we know we have to figure out because we live on the internet. And so we start to try to, you know, slowly plod through this weird thing, investigating it, figuring it out. But at some point we all make this mistake where we get on Google and we do some sort of search and then the results come and we weren't really prepared. It just absolutely overwhelms us and freaks us the heck out, <laughs> right? It's too much. You think, I can do this? No, I can't do this. It's terrifying. There's no possible way that I can take on this whole security thing. But that one's busted, okay? Security's not that terrifying. It's a lot to take in, but it's not that terrifying. So I'm Aaron Campbell. I lead the WordPress security team, um, so I dig into a lot of these bigger, slightly scarier security issues. Um, this is Aragon. Aragon was a family pet for about 10 years or so. She is a bearded dragon, the exact same kind that was in that video scaring the heck out of that cat. And she, uh, she's actually super friendly and docile and she loves to just sit on your shoulder or sit on your lap and watch TV. She's vegetarian so that cat had nothing to fear. It wasn't actually Godzilla. Um, but to be fair, she's like an 18 inch long lizard and she does appear a little scary, especially for people that don't particularly like lizards. But my experience with her did not start like this, when we got her, she was about two and a half or three inches long and she could sit in the palm of your hand. And, and these things that look like scary spikes, they were, they were these soft little tiny things. And, and so handling her and dealing with her sort of every day as she grew, I know that these spikes aren't spiky, they're soft. You can pet them, they're gentle. It, it looks scary. But it's not, but it's because I started at the beginning. I didn't just try to jump in to the deep end, so to speak. And I think that if we do the same with our online security, if we do the same with securing our websites, if we start out with the basics and sort of grow and build our knowledge base, then we'll be better prepared to sort of handle everything as it comes along. Um, we hear all kinds of things. Like it, it, to me, security isn't like figuring out how to secure your site. It's not hard because of a lack of information. It tends to be hard because of an overwhelming amount of information that contradicts each other. There's so much information online, so many people saying you have to do this or that to keep your site secure. And those are the things that I want to look at first. Um, one of the things that you hear all the time is that you have to update, 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 update all the things, update WordPress and plugins and themes. And if you run your own hosting, you need to update PHP and your, your database server and whatever it is, update, always run the latest. That will help you stay secure. But is that the truth? Does that actually help keep you secure? Who thinks that this helps keep you secure online? Updating all the things. Yeah? Who disagrees? 
Yeah, so this one is absolutely confirmed. I'm going to start with the easy one here. Update, 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 update. Um, always. Especially around WordPress, this is one of your sort of best things that you can do to keep yourself secure online. And, and the, the counter argument that I always hear is, but when a release first comes out, isn't it more buggy? Isn't it likely to have more security vulnerabilities in it? Shouldn't I wait for the sort of point one release, right? Or the, the, the next iteration? Um, and no, <laughs> it's, it's usually not. Could it potentially have more bugs and new features? That's a possibility. Is it going to have more security vulnerabilities? No. Um, every security vulnerability that we patch in WordPress, every time we find a thing and we fix it, we fix it in the current version. Absolutely. So we're going to, you know, the release a what, you know, whatever point something, and then we fix it in older versions if that's applicable so that people still running some older versions can still update and get the fix. And we also fix it in the next version right then at the same time. So when that next version comes out, the fix is already in the code base. It's already been sitting there. We don't have any additional security vulnerabilities that have not been, you know, that have been handled for our current version that have not already been taken care of for our future version. Um, and so this is just how WordPress functions. You can trust the, that the updates are going to be the most secure version of WordPress that we know to exist. Um, and one of the most common ways that a site is exploited is through known vulnerabilities in older versions um, being you know, programmed into a system that's just running through and looking for anyone running an old version of WordPress um, and breaking into sites. So keep your stuff up to date. Um, <clears throat> something that I hear pretty consistently um, is this idea that no one will attack me. Um, this one's a little, it goes something like this. Um, if I'm running a business site or an e-commerce site, it's really, really, really important to pay attention to security and because people are going to target me. They're going to go after me. But on my personal site or on like my mom's blog, it's less important because people are less likely to attack me. Are these bigger sites that carry personal private information more likely to be attacked than these smaller sites that don't. Is it easier to secure a smaller site? Is it going to be attacked less? I get some shaking heads. Absolutely not. Um, we all tend to picture, when we think about hackers breaking into sites, we tend to picture a person sitting at a computer saying, this is the site I want to break into. I'm going to break into it and actively attacking that site. Those kinds of attacks do exist, but they account for a fraction of 1% of overall attacks on the web. The 99 plus percent of the rest of the attacks are scripted attacks. It's bots. It's software that someone has written to crawl the web and try to break into every site. Um, it doesn't care if this is a business site or a personal site. It doesn't even know. It just attacks every single site. And as a matter of fact, if you've had a site on the internet for more than about five minutes, you've been attacked. You have. Hopefully not successfully, but you absolutely have been attacked. And that sounds scary, and I'm sorry, um, but it's also a fact. I wish that this weren't the case. It would make my job a lot easier. Um, but it is. You're going to be attacked. The good news is... Because most of these attacks are these scripted software attacks, all we have to do is be better than that software. We, our, our security practices need to deter this piece of software that's trying to break into our sites. And if we can accomplish that, 
then we can beat 99 plus percent of attacks on the web. That's huge and achievable. Like we can do that and it's not even all that difficult as we work through the rest of these myths and facts around security. If you can follow the general principles of the ones that are actual facts that actually help you, then you will be able to deter this huge percentage of attacks. Um, uh, the, the guy that I feel like put it the best, uh, Gerald Barron, uh, I used to work with him at iThemes. He said, it's not if you get attacked, but rather how you prevent it from being successful. And that's what we have to focus on because we can't actually stop the attacks, but we can prevent them from being successful and that's where we focus. Um, the next one that you hear pretty often is that we need to lock down our files. And the way this one su supposedly works, right, is that if, um, if an attacker gets part way in, if, if they're trying to, they've gotten far enough in where they can try to uh, write some sort of backdoor into a, a file on my server, if I have all those files locked down so that they can't be written to, then they won't be able to succeed. They won't be able to leave that back door for them to use later um, in compromising my site. We all see the, the file permissions. Sometimes it's like read, write, execute, read, write, execute. Sometimes it's numeric 777, right? We all see that. What, uh, the question is, does locking those down, preventing them from being written to, does that make your site more secure? <laughs> I see. I see all kinds of all kinds of different responses. Um, this one. This one can be. This one can have some specific situations where things are a little different. But in general, this one is busted. And here's why. Um, I think that there's actually a few reasons. And one is I think it's putting security in the wrong place, first of all. Uh, to me, this is like if you put in a security door between your living room and kitchen so that if someone breaks into your house, they can't steal your china, right? Let's just keep them out of the house completely. That's where I want them to stay. Um, so if they're in far enough where they can be writing to your files, we've failed somewhere else along the way. Um, additionally, WordPress needs to write to some areas, right? We have uploads for media and things like that. So if they can't write to one specific file or directory, they're gonna try another until they find one that they can write to. And chances are one exists because you like to be able to upload an image to attach to your post, right? That's normal use case. So <clears throat> between those two, like that, that's, one whole side of the argument and the other side comes more from like my point of view on the security team around automatic updates. Because if you've locked down your files so that they can't be written to, then that means WordPress can't automatically update itself. And I said that updating is extremely important to staying secure and for security releases, we can do that for you. When I push out a security release, whenever the next security release comes out, anyone that hasn't specifically gone in and locked down their files or disabled that, you're automatically gonna get updated to the most secure version. And usually I'm pushing that out because there's a vulnerability we need to fix. I want to be able to secure your site, whether you're, you know, having a meeting with a client or sleeping or it doesn't matter. Your site is updating and becoming more secure just sort of magically without you even having to worry about it. And if you lock down these files, you limit us from being able to help you. And we have a team of like 30 something people that are particularly good at security and are constantly worrying about the security of WordPress and keeping it as secure as possible. And we'd like to help you by keeping your site as secure as we can too. Um, but if you try to lock things down like this, you lock us out as well. 
Um, the next big thing, who's heard this one before? Don't use admin as a username, oh. right? You hear it all the time. And it, it's actually sort of a variation of your username should be secret. You don't want people to know what your username is because if they know what your username is, then they're halfway to breaking into your account because you only have a username and a password. So if they know what your username is, they're halfway there. Does avoiding using admin or any other known username, does that make you more secure? No. no. Smart people in here, busted. The, who here uses Twitter? Yeah, I do. It's, it's at Aaron Campbell. Now you know my username for Twitter, right? Oh, man. Uh, I use Gmail. When I give you my email address, which we all give out to everybody here left and right, then I know your username for Gmail, right? A username is not part of your security. A username is you claiming who you are. It's like if I walk in my bank and I say, I'm Aaron, I want money. My bank says, okay, prove it. Like they expect some form of ID or something like that as proof. I come into my website login, I say, I'm Aaron Campbell, and it says, okay, prove it. It wants a password. The password is where the security li lies. The username is just a claim for who you are. And one of the reasons that I try to address topics like this, having a username that no one knows, that doesn't hurt your security. It just doesn't particularly help it because there are a lot of ways to discover a username or figure it out programmatically. So these scripts that are crawling sites that maybe used to be hard-coded hard to try the username admin are now just figuring out what your username is and using it. Spending a lot of time trying to keep that username secret, um, to me, that's you wasting time that you could be putting into efforts that actually make you more secure. So these things that are myths, it's not, they're not all so bad that they're gonna make your security worse. But when you spend time working on things to make yourself more secure and it doesn't make you more secure, you're less likely to do the other things that actually do make you more secure. If you're gonna do five things to keep yourself secure online, I want them all to be effective because if four of them aren't, then you're less likely to do more. What about changing your database prefix? Who has seen the database tables in a WordPress install? They're usually WP underscore users, WP underscore posts, like all that, right? That WP underscore, that's configurable. You can change that in your config file. You can make it anything you want that's a valid, uh, valid in a database table name. Um, and the idea here is that as people are trying to break into your site and they're trying to send commands to your database to pull a list of users or to sneak in a, a user that you didn't want or whatever it is, that you don't want them to know what your table names are. You, you want to hide them from them. Does this make you more secure? No. no. I, get, I, get a, I get a resounding no. Correct, it does not make you more secure. Again, this is one of those things that if you wanna change your database prefix because you're running several sites in one database or because you have a particular naming convention that you like, um, that's fine. But if you're doing it to keep yourself more secure, that's not helpful. Because Similar to the, the admin username thing, the scripts that we're up against now, these automated systems that are going through and trying to break into our sites, they're more intelligent than they used to be. And they no longer hard code in database table names. If they're somehow in your WordPress already, then they're using the WordPress functions to pull the username just like the rest of WordPress. If they're just directly querying your database, they're asking it, hey, what tables do you have? Great, I'll use those ones. Um, that's how these systems work now. So again, this isn't making you more secure. What about moving or hiding the admin of WordPress? Every WordPress site 
you can go to either slash wp-login.php and you get your little login form or to slash wp admin and it redirects you to your login form if you're not logged in, right? Every WordPress site, and there's millions and millions of them online, <clears throat> doesn't that make it easier for hackers that are trying to break into your site or these scripts that are trying to break into your site to try to log in because they just know where to do it? So could you move that to some other URL and make that one that it used to be at, you know, 404 or something like that um, in order to keep your site more secure? Does this keep you more secure? I hope so. You hope so? <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry. You were so good with some of them. Busted. Uh, <clears throat> um, Let's say that you build a, a, a brand new house, like it's this, this beautiful house, but you don't want people to break into this house, right? So you're on a nice street, you've got this beautiful manicured lawn and you've got this little winding pathway up and a porch and no door, no door, because if people are trying to break in your house, they're gonna try to come right to that door and break in and you have fooled them, except they know you have a door somewhere, right? <laughs> They know that you get in and out of your house somewhere and they're gonna find it. These scripts are pretty similar. They're, they're very intelligent and they are capable of doing all kinds of tricks to try to find your login page. They are pretty successful at it. Um, and that's okay, let's just secure the login and not worry about hiding it. Um, and, and we can do that. The other thing with this one is WordPress was not really designed from the beginning to move admin somewhere else. And it breaks a lot of stuff. Um, the, the, the number of sort of external tools that struggle with this, um, it can be pretty frustrating when you move your admin, all the other things that that sort of as a rippling effect tends to bother. Um, and you will definitely hear plugin developers, uh, probably many of them here, that curse the fact that plugins exist to move admin because it makes their jobs so much harder. So this has a tendency to break stuff, but it also doesn't keep you more secure. Um, what about SSL? We've been hearing a lot about SSL over the relatively recent past, um, especially as Chrome has pushed harder and harder to have SSL be like this big thing that's necessary. Um, we see all the SEO people talking about how it dramatically affects your, your search engine rankings, which we know it at least affects them some because Google has said it does, but that's SEO. And a lot of people claim that this also helps with security. Does it? Is SSL on your site, is having your site be HTTPS instead of HTTP. Is that important? Does that help your security? A Little bit more tentative on the answer, but it eventually came. Yes, absolutely, SSL every site. I want the entire internet to have SSL. I want every site everywhere to have it. It absolutely should. And as prices have dropped dramatically to where many hosts are offering SSL for free or extremely inexpensively, it should absolutely be on every business site, every client site, every fun site, every meme site, every like, you know, person's site about their collection of thimbles. Like every site should have SSL. And the reason is that what that does is it encrypts all the traffic between whatever computer is accessing your site, whether it's yours or one of your visitors, and the server that terminates the SSL, usually the actual web server. And that's huge because that traffic goes through a lot of places. There are a lot of routers between you and there that you don't know if those have been compromised and someone's listening in on traffic. Uh, some people are accessing or logging into a site through Coffeehouse Wi-Fi and you don't know who's on there listening. And SSL means that even if that traffic is looked at between point A and point B, it's encrypted. So they can't just pull a username and password and go, oh, I'm gonna save this for later, um, which is a very common thing to do. 
uh, these, these uh, systems that are trying to break into your site are also trying to break into routers along the way just to listen so that they can break into your site easier. Like that's, that's a thing that they do. SSL really dramatically helps with that. <clears throat> Passwords, right? I'm not even gonna play with this. Passwords are important, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I even said it earlier, right? Usernames, not so important. Passwords are important. So why even put this in here, Aaron? Well, passwords are really, really, really important. And we all know that we should have good passwords. The biggest thing that I see around passwords is that a lot of us don't really know what makes a good password. There is just as much like totally terrible information about choosing good passwords out there as anything else. Um, so instead of just saying passwords are important, I want to talk a little bit about what makes a good password. Long passwords. The idea here is that longer is better. Always longer is better. Passwords are measured in something called, like password strength is measured in something called entropy that roughly translates to number of guesses it takes to break your password. And the idea is longer means more guesses, that's better. Does longer make your password better? Yes, yes. Longer makes your password better assuming everything else is equal. Everything else is not always equal. But assuming that, that, that everything else is equal, longer is better. More characters is better. Long doesn't mean like eight to 12 characters. Long is like 20 plus at this point. That's the kind of computing power that we're at. My passwords tend to be uh, 50 characters unless the site won't allow me to do it. Um, and then I grump about that site and I get really frustrated and sometimes I just leave and go it's not worth it and sometimes I grump a little bit more and then pick whatever max length they let me. Um, what about substitutions? We've all seen this, right? The idea here is that you can pick letters that uh, can be replaced with a number or a character that looks kind of like that letter um, and it makes your password so much more elite, so much more powerful. It's absolutely right. Does this make your password more secure? No. no, it does not. I am amazed most people say absolutely yes for that one, but you all came right in with the no. Um, it doesn't. And the main reason, again, is that these scripts that are trying to break passwords, they're, they know that people do this. So this kind of substitution is built in to trying to break your password. And there's really only a handful of characters in the English alphabet that are easily replaceable and only a handful of replacements. So while it may increase the number of guesses required a little bit, it's not very much. And it increases the difficulty of remembering your password a lot, right? You're like, was this, was this L a one or an exclamation point? Oh no, I just left it in L. I, you know, I mean, you can never tell, you can never remember, but substitutions are not particularly effective. They make it harder for humans, but not harder for computers, at least not much harder. And that's really what we're up against. What about passphrases? Um, so this is, this is my dog, King Air, by the way. Um, I was, this picture was taken while I was on a video conference call. I'm sitting in my chair. I'm talking to my computer. She thought I should be talking to her. And so for like a 30 minute conference call, this is what I saw the whole time, just sitting there staring at me. And the idea of a passphrase is that we can take something that's memorable to us and turn it into basically like a password is a sentence. And so maybe I would make my password something like, King Air watches me on calls. And this is a thing that I could remember pretty easy, and it's long, 27 characters long. So do passphrases, are passphrases good? Do they make our passwords better? Do they keep us more secure online? <laughs> I love the eh, because I said plausible. And here's, <laughs> here's why. Um, length is good. Length is good. Um, but raw length isn't absolutely everything. Um, just a raw entropy measurement is, is 
based on kind of the raw brute force method of trying, like what we see in movies, right? Trying A, B, C, right? A, 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 B, A, C, trying to eventually get to your password. Um, that is rarely used that anymore because it's very inefficient. Um, a much more common attack is what's called a dictionary attack. They take most commonly used words and the good scripts are hitting your site and going, I want to break into AaronDCampbell.com. And so it scans my site, sees that I have a link off to Twitter. So it scans my social feed and it builds a dictionary based on words that I use. Um, so my dog's name, which is really the only unique thing in here, King Air, uh, is probably going to be in the dictionary because I've probably tweeted about her before. Um, and so they build this custom dictionary and then they use that to attempt to break your password. And with this comes a lot of the common things that we do. Who has numbers in their password? but they're at the end, right? We all do it like, you're like, oh dang, it makes me have a number added at the end. When you have to have a special character, it's an exclamation point at the end, isn't it? It always is. It's like, my password's no longer password, it's password, right? And these systems, they, they know that. They, and so they will build these dictionary attacks. They try things like substitution, spaces and no spaces when building sentences, using punctuation at the end, numbers at the end. Like these are the common things. And so while this may take a long time to crack using sort of what we see in movies, that raw brute force, kind of the adjusted entropy of only five words and it being kind of common words that I would use, is not great. You can make passphrases that are really good. Um, you can combine them with some special character things. Uh, I've done things like pick a mathematical formula and put that in the middle of a passphrase or something. And that can dramatically increase the strength of a passphrase and still make it pretty easy to use. But the best thing that you can do is just use a password manager. Who here uses a password manager? I love that this, like the percentage is getting higher every time I give this talk. I love it. Over like the last year or so, in variations of these security talks, I'm always trying to find out who's using a password manager um, because passwords are so important. And the only way you can have good password practices online is to use a password manager because good passwords are long, random and unique. Long being, like I said, at least 20 characters, random being actually randomly generated. Like that's the best case scenario because you would force these scripts to use the least efficient method of breaking your password as possible, that sort of raw brute force. And unique, meaning it's only ever used in one place. So if you log into 100 different places, you need 100 different long random passwords and you're not gonna remember those, so you need a password manager to do that. I use LastPass, uh, a lot of people use one password. I don't care which one you use, there's a lot of good ones out there, uh, but you need a password manager. So if you didn't raise your hand, you were surrounded by people that did, talk to one of them, learn about password managers. Um, I'm basically out of time, but I would like to see if anybody has like other things that they've heard and see if we get a, a minute or two to squash some myths right now. So with social engineering, uh, the, one of the prime things that is done is to put in a key logger. Uh, and so the, the, the strange looking characters in a randomized passcode look as opposed to a passphrase, which is uh, normal text-looking characters not readily identifiable. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in, the, in, in those situations where you know they're using social engineering and they're getting some sort of key logger in place, whether that's on your system or somewhere between you and the endpoint, um, that could be the case the number of attacks that we see doing that kind of thing compared to the ones that are just brute hacking, um, like that's a small fraction. So you're kind of 
hedging your bets that you're gonna be hit by this little percentage, whereas it's much more likely to be hit by the bigger thing. Um, if the key logger is somewhere not on your computer, then SSL is gonna help protect you against that because they're not gonna be able to see it. Um, if it is on your computer and that's a thing that you're really scared of, two-factor authentication is the actual answer to that one, not passphrases. Um, and that's because even if they log that six-digit code that you type in, it changes 30 seconds later by the time they get the chance to use it because most of them aren't taking action immediately. It's going to someone else. They're using it later. Uh, by then, it's no good. Last question. Last question. Um, does moving your WP config file up a directory level actually help? Um, if you're on a terribly unreliable server that may serve up raw PHP, <laughs> probably. But in general, not especially. Um, the only risk there is if something has happened to your server to the point that it is serving that PHP in plain text to a person when they visit it, and that should never happen. Um, so generally speaking, no, it doesn't necessarily hurt anything, again, but it's not a dramatic increase in security. Um, I'm Aaron Campbell. I am employed by GoDaddy to work full time on the WordPress project. I do that by leading the security team. I am going to be around for the rest of the day because I see that there's more questions. I would love to take them, but I got to seed this to the next speaker. <laughs>